All right, so let's get started. Dear ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tobias Langmann from Technische Universität Braunschweig and I'd like to welcome you to our webinar on our newly developed CAM tool. Before we dive into the presentation of our CAM tool, I would like to give you a brief overview of the GOKEN project as an introduction. I'd also like to welcome our project partners in the GOKEN project who will join this presentation and contribute later on. So in this presentation, we will put the focus on the concept of the GOKEN project, the international case study areas and their particularities. We also want to take a look at the monitoring systems established in the project, which provide the databases for the operation of the integrated hydro system models that we used and implemented in our project GOKEN. The results of the hydro system models play an important role, of course, as indicators for water management evaluation and for the identification of measures for an optimized integrated water resource management with our new CAM tool. Following this presentation, Michael Sander from GISCON will introduce our CAM tool in more detail. And after an introduction to the functionalities and the possibilities of the CAM tool, we will hopefully have some time left to work live with the tool. The achievement of water supply security is one outstanding aim of the Sustainable Development Goals of the UN Sustainable Agenda for 2030, affected by climate change, by saltwater intrusion and human impacts such as intensive agriculture, fresh water supply, especially in coastal regions, is nowadays still threatened in many countries worldwide. So in the project, we chose four international case study areas that we can see on the right hand side of the slide here and um, these case st study areas have been selected because it will be essential for them to discuss the water resource management um, in the future to achieve future water security. So let's take a closer look at the case study areas. It is in Germany, the working, working region number one, uh, Großen Kneten and uh, the Sande la Moens area at the North Sea coast. And then we have the area around Joao Pessoa in Brazil and Antalya in Turkey and Buffalo City in South Africa. So each of these case study regions has its particularities that had to be taken into account both in the hydro system modeling, of course, and in the development of the tools because uh, we want to make we want to make a, a tool that is widely applicable and transferable from one region to another. So the region's uh, particularities are listed in the left half of this slide and uh, cover challenges such as the risk of groundwater salination, for example, in the entire region, or uh, challenges derived from climate change, which affect all of the region that we chose and many other regions, coastal regions, especially all around the globe. So with the CAM2, we wanted to tackle these challenges and the challenge of implementing an integrated water resource management in a general way and of course tailored to our case study regions in coastal zones. So the keys and challenges for the successful implementation of an improved integrated water resource management are firstly to or are firstly it is important to achieve the ambitious aim of the SDG target six. It requires a full understanding of a complex water resource system in each region and under under consideration of the resource sustainability and water quality protection. Secondly, a profound knowledge of important driving forces such as demographic change, climate change, governance structures or economic state of a region is essential to target current and future challenges. And finally, a sustainable decision making process and therefore on the dialogue among stakeholders in the water sector of coastal regions is important to integrate such an improved integrated water management. So there is a, obviously which is shown in many investigations and publications, there is still a missing link between science on the one hand and practice and policy on the other hand. And this still missing link needs to be overcome in order to address the continuing water quantity and quality problems in coastal zones. So therefore our GOCOM project includes and addresses 
water agencies, water supply companies, competent authorities and local universities in each case study regions that we got on board of our project. The synergetic interplay of numerical hydrogeological modeling tools, modern subsurface reconstruction techniques, as well as complex monitoring systems are key to understanding the water resource systems in all case study areas, and they have a key to identify key indicators in complex coastal and ecosystem settings. Ensuring the coastal water security is possible, but it is not important, it is not possible without numerical models with high scientific claims that inform public and policymakers. So this is one of our main statements from our project, which needs to be underlined. So for the quantification of the regional water balance, as well as the quantification of regional water availability, we set up hydrological models for our four case study regions and we were able to calibrate and validate them successfully. So one of the hydrological model or one shapefile of our model area is shown on the lower right hand side of the slide. Um, after calibration validation, we chose an ensemble of cortex data of climate scenarios um, in combination with management scenarios. Um, and um, they have been calculated using the hydrological modeling system Pantaray to create a reliable bandwidth of possible future conditions. Additionally we, test, additionally, we tested four different methods for bias correction, and the results of hydrological modeling serve on the one hand as input for the groundwater, uh, groundwater models. Uh, the linking variable here is the groundwater recharge, which is plotted in this map. And on the other hand, uh, the findings from hydrosystem modeling um, served as indicators for the evaluation on the basis of our coastal aquifer management tool. So next up is Dr. Hans-Georg Zobisch from Inside Geologische Software System in Köln presenting you how modern subsurface reconstruction techniques can contribute to the implementation of an integrated water management and reaching the SDG 6 targets. Oh, sorry, that was one too <laughs> yeah. Uh, good morning, everyone, everybody, uh, and um, the part we had in the in the Gokan project was to <clears throat> calculate the, the geological subsurface in form of three D models, and we did it for three areas, which is one is. Lamöns and Großen Kneten in the northern part of Germany, as well as for one <coughs> model in, in Brazil. These models are mainly uh, structure models reconstructed on the <coughs> base of drill log <coughs> information, uh, describing the subsurface <coughs> in form of shells of each geological unit. This uh, way of modeling was developed by the inside company over many, many years. And in this project, we extended the methodology in the way that we added new functionalities to detect the properties of the subsurface <coughs> uh, units, especially for the hydrogeological conductivity. So we worked first in a simple way to uh, to pass the drill log descriptions and uh, you must know that these descriptions are not, not just some drill logs we have ten thousands of, of drill logs in that area um, to make an auto automatization for the <coughs> subsurface classification and in the next step then we uh, tested more sophisticated uh, methodologies with uh, machine learning algorithms where we had some very interesting uh, results uh, and so we could <coughs> develop an automated estimator for the hydrogeological conductivity out of uh, uh, log <coughs> descriptions and these informations were mainly used for the <coughs> um, proposal of uh, to propose the uh, 
uh, hydrogeological conductivity, which was then used for the <coughs> flow and transport uh, modeling. So we were in this project very early in the, uh, we had an early work before the 3D modeling of the flow and uh, transport modeling uh, could start. So thank you very much. So next up is a small movie showing how the hydrogeological or geological underground reconstruction in, Großen, in the Großen Kneten area was uh, conducted. So. So please enjoy the movie and maybe Hans Georg can put can drop some comments on the uh, on the video. Uh, what, what you see is uh, <clears throat> the three three D model uh, in three views. On the uh, left side, <clears throat> you see the, the map, and uh, this map is more or less uh, with the geolo ge geological map, <clears throat> which was. Um, uh, built by the Geological Survey of Lower Saxony, and based on this information plus the drill log information, we constructed the 3D model, which is on the right side now rotating, where you see that it is a three-dimensional <coughs> uh, model. Uh, you must know that the exaggeration is very high. Uh, in reality, these <coughs> units are very <coughs> thin, and in the uh, window. At the bottom, you see one of the, the cross sections, which can be uh, reconstructed from this model on the fly. So the user has a, a very good overview of all of the geological units, <coughs> uh, including that distribution in three and uh, two and three dimension, and a lot of possibilities to view the <coughs> special units in cross sections, 3D views, exploded views, uh, maps, etc. All right, thank you very much, Hans Georg. So I will close the video, go back to the presentation, and oops, that was the wrong slide. So, and next up is no. This is not the right slide, sorry. Okay, I take over. Good morning, everyone. My name is Helga Wiederholt. I am from the Leibniz Institute for Applied Geophysics in Hannover. And um, our task in this project is twofold. But perhaps first, besides the static geological conditions that we just learned from Hans Georg, uh, we have to deal with saline the salinization. Let's go to the uh, project area Sande la Mönz, that is at the, at the North Sea coast. You see it on the, on the small colored map on top right, left beside the photo. There you see the, uh, the resistivity in 15 meters below surface. A map, these data are uh, surveyed by Aero Electromagnetics, a survey done by BGR some years ago, and you see in red colors the low resistivity that stands for uh, salinized water. And what you, you see, uh, I, I don't know whether you are at home in this map, you have on, on the right side the Jadebusen and the city of Wilhelmshaven, and in the north you see the East Frisian islands and uh, yes, in red the, the salt water and you see that it doesn't follow the coastline. And so the uh, objectives or tasks of LIAG were to derive the fresh saline groundwater distribution as initial condition for the density dependent groundwater model that uh, uh, will be calculated by GRS, you see in the next slides. And yes, for, for this, uh, we use this area electromagnetic data. And um, on, on bottom, you see also two cross sections. 
uh, across this black line in the map and you see that uh, the ge geology in northern Germany is not uh, not simple but we have um, glacial effects with uh, buried valleys and so on and you see the saline water on the on the eastern side um, and the freshwater wedge on top of this. And uh, the other the other objective of LIAG is a real-time monitoring of this fresh saline interface. And uh, this is done at a single this is can we cannot do it uh, in the total area, this is done on, on single locations, but on a on a depth range covering about 20 meters. And we have we developed a saltwater intrusion monitoring system we call ZAMOS, and it's um, it's working like it's a vertical electrical chain. We also measure the resistivity. The resistivity correlates with salinity, and so. Uh, during the GOCAM project, we found two locations in the area Sandelamöns where we installed such a system. You see it as these uh, red dots. And uh, so um, we monitor there since December 2018 or March 2020. So the time series is not so long until now. And um, the, the long-term aim is to have an early warning system for saltwater intrusion. Yes, that's from my side. Thanks. So thank you very much, Helga. Thank you for this interesting contribution showing us uh, how geophysical investigation plays an important role both for gaining a better system understanding and both as an important input information for groundwater modeling. So now I would like to hand over to Anke Schneider from GIS presenting us how we conducted groundwater modeling the GOKA project. Yes, hello everybody. Let's come now to groundwater modeling. I'm Anke Schneider from the GIS in Braunschweig. Our objective in this project is a prediction of possible developments of the groundwater situation in the future. The results, for instance, the groundwater heads, salt or nitrate concentrations are provided to the CAM tool. For groundwater modeling in the GoCAM project, we use the code D3F++. D3F, that means distributed density driven flow. It is a finite volume code based on the UG package of the University of Frankfurt. The code was specially developed for density driven flow. It is parallelized and makes use of the modern solvers such as geometric as well as geometric, no geometric and algebraic multi-world methods. What you see here is, as an example, the hydrogeological model of the case study Sandler Mönz with the pumping wells and the network of the draining river system. Here, the main objective of the modeling is predicting the development of the freshwater saltwater interface in the future. The model is based on a lot of data provided by our project partners, especially the geological structure developed here by the Oldenburg East Friesian Water Board, the groundwater recharge rates for the different scenarios from our colleagues from the Braunschweig University and the soil distribution as an initial state for our model as just seen from the Leibniz Institute for Applied Geophysics. Based on this data, groundwater flow and soil transport are simulated for 18 climate and pumping scenarios, mainly based on the results just shown by Tobias Langmann. For another case study, the Großen Kneten region, groundwater flow and nitrate transport are simulated. In this case, the challenge is to identify the significant chemical, chemical processes to, the regarded, to be regarded in a regional scale model to address the nitrate problematic. Our third case study is also a saltwater intrusion model in the region of Antalya in Turkey. Yes. Let's come now, so let's switch over to the CAM. Yes, it works. 
uh, using a platform called Come Up, the results of the different subprojects and models may be directly be uploaded into the Come dialog platform. These are, among others, groundwater recharge and discharge rates, as well as the ground the surface water budget from the Pantaray model, and chloride and nitrate concentrations, groundwater heads, and the available freshwater volume as results of the groundwater model. In CAM, these results, maps, and other data may be visualized and also be used to derive a distinguished number of indicators, such as water management variables or ratings, including the influence of climate and social economic changes. In the CAM platform, these indicators are subject to a combined evaluation. In the course of a participation process, currently the eight indicators shown in this table were identified and implemented in CAM. The rating of the indicators, as well as the objective functions for the evaluation, can be influenced by the user. And now let's shift attention to the CAM dialog platform. Please, Michael. Okay, I, I can have a take. Um, Tobias, can you switch the slide? Of course. Okay. Um, the main goal of the project uh, is the development of an online dialogue platform, um, coastal aquifer management area that and in short, uh, CAM that enables a user oriented evaluation of complex numeric modeling and research results. Um, to charge this, uh, we implemented a four step process um, at the beginning. Um, in this figure uh, on the top, we, um, the modeler, um, use the CAM up tool to, um, to prepare the modeling. Um, information, the uh, index raster using CAM up, uploaded uh, this uh, raster to the CAM dialog platform and in, inside the dialog platform, the user are able to choose um, the specific um, scenario. Um, the scenario consists um, with the different indicator rasters and um, uh, the user is able to, uh, to select one or more of these indicator rosters, define a target function inside the system, um, rate the single um, index raster, and um, can calculate using MCDA um, the whole result um, of his um, computing. And after each user um, did this um, process or follow this process, um, the user are able to compare their um, results um, in the right side of the um, figure. And um, it's very helpful uh, to discuss um, um, where are problems inside the systems, uh, what can I do, which action are possible to resolve some um, um, resource problems. And that's one, one important step to transfer um, the scientific results um, to the discussion process between uh, different stakeholders. Okay, Tobias? Yes, um, you, you can find um, the video about the CAM dialog platform in our digital marketplace. Um, on the upper right um, screen in our digital marketplace, you can start the video and get an overview about um, the whole system with uh, nearly all functions. And um, that's what we do um, now. We will have a look into the video and uh, please enjoy um, this video. And you can repeat it um, every time using the um, access um, over the digital marketplaces from Grow. stakeholders to evaluate complex modeling results using multi-criteria decision analysis techniques and share various data with different type of permissions. The CUM tool is user-friendly. A tutorial has been provided to guide the user through the main working procedures in the tool.
First of all, the user should sign into the platform. To view the study regions for GoCom project, use the link study areas in the menu bar in the header, you will get an overview map for the available study areas. These areas are represented on the map by colored rectangle. By clicking on each one, you will get pop-up box. In this pop-up, you can click on the shown picture to see more details for the area, and to have the possibility, either to begin and run a new calculation, or to explore the saved calculation results. To run a new calculation and save the result, we should first select a scenario. Now by clicking on the button Scenarios, a list of cards will appear. Each card is actually an available scenario for the selected area, including all the related information. After selecting a scenario, a table will be shown. Each row represents a provided indicator. You can get short description for every indicator by hovering your mouse on it. Here you can select one indicator or more by ticking the checkbox in front of every indicator. Once an indicator is selected, one function can be assigned to it. The function select options contains two menu. Default function, this menu contains just one function, which is defined by default by administrator. The second menu is your functions, which contains a list of your own defined functions. If a function with spatial distribution has been chosen, a window will display. On the left side, the spatial distribution of the selected function is presented. For each sub-area in the study area, different parameters have been defined. The selected function will be applied on the selected indicator. Consequently, this indicator with predefined legend will be presented on the right side. By clicking one of the spatial areas in the legend of the spatial distribution of target function located on the left side, you will see in the middle a diagram with parameters belonging that area. Accordingly, the defined parameters of this sub-area will be performed only on the indicator's pixels located in that sub-area, which will be highlighted. You can change the parameters of the selected default function by dragging the points in the diagram. These changes will be implemented on the selected indicator and the result will be previewed on the fly on the right side. You can switch the view of the indicator to the whole area as well. These function can be modified additionally by mouse right-click and entering the parameters. The same thing, the indicator will be viewed on the right side and you can check if the whole area has been updated as well. The selected indicator should be weighted by a value between 0 and 1. As we said, an individual scenario is represented as a collection of indicator rasters. That means, multiple indicators can be chosen and considered for our evaluation. We do the same step for every selected indicator, assigning a function and customizing it, weighting the indicators. But we should take into consideration that the sum of weighting values for the selected indicators must be 1. Otherwise, we will not be able to continue the process. Now we can choose the method, composite programming, to perform it on the calculation. After we've finished the selection of the available options previously, we can run our calculation by just clicking on the button, calculate. Consequently, we will get a window, which includes a preview for the calculation result. In order to save your result, a name and a short description should be input and then click save. Accordingly, the result will be published as web services and the related information will be saved in CAM database. To browse your stored results and analyze it, go back to the selected study area and explore your calculations. Each one will be shown including thumbnail, name, short description and the created date. Here you can update the name and description for each calculation, or you can delete it. You can set permissions and you can view the calculation in a GIS viewer. Moreover, two calculations can be compared. You have the possibility as well to get more information about your result knowing which indicators have been used in every calculation result, which functions and weighting values have been assigned for every indicator in the concern calculation, in which scenario the calculation has been run, you can assign the permissions for your result to specific users. You can also assign it to a group and when you do that, all the group members will have those permissions. You can select a calculation by toggling the checkbox on the right bottom corner for every calculation result to view it in a web GIS viewer where you can analyze it. As we said, two calculations can be compared. To do that, we select two of our results and click on Comparison. 
the first result on the left side and the second result on the right side. Regarding the indicators involved in the calculation procedure, a background process has been implemented to upload it into the platform. The project areas, the concerned scenarios and indicators with its default target function should be first defined on the CUM platform. These data will be written into the down directory on the cloud, where the data between the CUM platform and CUMUP can be exchanged. CUMUP is a software, which is used for preparing and creating modeling results, which will be represented on the platform as indicators. CUMUP will be connected to the cloud. This cloud has three directories, down settings up. Down contains data, handled by the CUM platform and imported by CUMUP. Settings contains default settings, used by CUMUP which are allowed to be changed by user. Up contains indicators created by CUMUP, ready for exporting to the CUM dialog platform. Accordingly, CUM will read the directory up, upload the new created indicator raster into the system and set the necessary configuration to be displayed and processed properly. The layers on the platform are published resources, representing raster or vector spatial data. A wide range of documents types are allowed on the platform, including text files, spreadsheets, images, videos, PDF, which can be easily uploaded to the platform. It is also possible to register external map services, using OGC standards, to load remote layers into the platform. In order to create new maps, click on the Create Map link in the navigation bar. This will open a map viewer. A map can be created using the uploaded layers in the system or the remote layers served from other web map services. Select the wanted layers and add it to the map. Click on the Map button in the toolbar, and select Save Map. Enter a title and abstract for your map. Want to encourage the dialogue between different stakeholders, the results of two users can be analyzed side by side. To do that, we need to enter the dialog page by using the link dialog in the menu bar in the header. Click on the button Start Dialog on this page, will direct you to an overview map for the available study areas. After selecting a specific study area, a list of the available users' income will appear. When you choose one of the listed users, you will be redirected to another page. On the left side of this page, a list of your calculation results will be shown. On the right side, a list of the calculation results for the selected user. Only the calculations that you are allowed to view. We can check which options have been involved in every calculation. The selected scenarios and indicators. The applied functions and its parameters. The weighting values for every indicator. Once you select one calculation result for each user, the button Start Comparison will be activated. Clicking on it, you will be redirected to a page, where the two calculations, will be shown on the map, separated with a swipe tool. This tool, allows you to use the pointer, to swipe the map viewer from left to right, and vice versa. You have the possibility as well, to view the implemented indicator for each user, and compare it, side by side in this map viewer. All the previous presented features and processes, were done on the client site. The platform has additionally an administration interface, which provides a quick overview and management tool over the database. The content on the platform, can be managed here, including, project area, scenarios, indicators, default functions, layers, documents, users, groups and their authorizations. So I hope you enjoyed the video on our Vocam uh, or Cam tool. And I think right now we have some time left for questions, maybe for a discussion. And of course, we will have the opportunity to jump live into the tool if you have some questions uh, regarding the tool as well. So are there any questions uh, in the auditorium?
So one question is in the making. So obviously it wasn't a question, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Perhaps I have a question. How is it going on with the come tool with the end of the GoCamp project and with the end of the grow financing? Perhaps it's a question to Michael. <laughs> yes, that's a good question. <laughs> um, um, we tried to um, get connections to um, different uh, stakeholders in Lower Saxony and uh, we were optimistic that we uh, can get um, uh, new input from, from other sites. Um, that means the uh, Lower Saxony Water Day, um, that's an organization for all um, water um, applicants in uh, Lower Saxony are interested um, to use um, this uh, dialogue platform and um, uh, I think it's a good opportunity to um, the next development step. Okay, thank you. This is good to hear. Yes. But um, also the next steps are to uh, introduce this tool um, in our partner regions. Um, we didn't um, set that uh, up to know. Um, we tried to implement um, this tool in um, South Africa, Turkey, and um, maybe uh, also in uh, Brazil with our project partners there. And one addition, maybe right now we are programming uh, an interface to other modeling systems such as FeeFlow just to make the tool open and transferable tool because maybe some stakeholders in other regions are interested in using the tool but maybe or probably they will not have used the d3f plus plus groundwater models like we did in our project so it is essential and then soon possible to also integrate modeling results um, from these models and from these regions and then um, putting so to say the the um, assessment of the water management and the current situation and future conditions um, in the country. So that is another important thing that we are working on right now to make it easy, adaptable and uh, widely transferable. So there were no further questions, unfortunately, in the meantime. So maybe I don't know. Michael, maybe you want to have something else to show with the count tool, but I think the video was very illustri illustrative so far, so I don't know. Maybe some of you have something to add that you want to show. Or, or now, I want only to give the hint that uh, you can um, have a look to, to the GoCam dialogue platform, um, either to, um, over, to use the digital marketplace or you can directly go to, to the digital marketplace platform using the link uh, gocam.giscon.de and if you have any question um, you can contact us and we can provide your um, background information about the system, the system architecture and uh, the underlying programming. All right, so as we have no further attendees in the auditorium and no further questions, I think maybe we can close this webinar. So then I would like to thank you for having us and I would like to thank for your interest and um, say goodbye. And maybe we will have a discussion in some other time in some other place and I hope you we've evoked interest in our Come to it. So thanks for having us and goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye.
Well, so from my side, goodbye from the Gronet team and thank you for participating in this event. Uh, just, just to say again, further information on the project is available as the project said at the exhibition booth on the virtual marketplace. And uh, you're also welcome to make use of the networking lounge available on the marketplace to arrange meetings. And well, stay tuned. There are um, two other start grow side events coming up and um, then see you then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.